I'm going to rewrite Q and P so that I can line up the terms with the same coefficients. First, if we look at these pairwise with the terms with the same coefficients, it looks something like our notation for the exponential form of a complex number. To get this i in here, let's find q plus i times p. We'll start with the 1 from q, then I'll factor out 1 half. I'll have minus sine of theta, and then multiplying p times i, that's plus i cosine theta. Here I'll factor out 1 fourth. Q is negative cosine of 2 theta. i times p is negative i sine of 2 theta. And then we factor out 1 over 64. From q we have minus cosine of 6 theta, and i times p is minus i sine of 6 theta, and so on. These increasing powers of 1 half and the fact that this is an infinite series suggests that we should look for a converging infinite geometric series. Let's take a look at this first complex number and see if we can express it in terms of e to the theta. I'm going to put this into the complex plane. First I'll find e to the theta. We'll just say it's this acute angle here. So this is the cosine of theta and this is i times the sine of theta. The real part of this complex number is negative sine theta, so that's going to be over here. The imaginary part is cosine of theta, that's up here. So this is our complex number. It's pretty easy to see that this is a 90 degree rotation of cosine theta plus i times the sine of theta. This means we take our e to the theta i and we multiply it by e to the pi over 2 times i e to the pi over 2 times i, that's just i. So we can replace this with i times e to the theta i. Let's take a look at our second complex number here in the parentheses. That's negative cosine of 2 theta minus i sine of 2 theta. And we'll compare this to e to the 2 theta. So let's just say this is e to the 2 theta i. This is the cosine of 2 theta. This is i times the sine of 2 theta. The real part of this complex number is the negative of cosine of 2 theta, so that's about over here. And the imaginary part is minus sine 2 theta, so it's on the opposite side here. So here's the location of this complex number. Again, we can see that this looks like a 180 degree rotation of e to the 2 theta i. This is equivalent to two 90 degree rotations. So we can take e to the 2 theta i and multiply it by i twice. And that's going to be the same thing as this complex number. Let's try this one more time with our third complex number over here. This is the sine of 3 theta minus i times the cosine of 3 theta. And we'll compare this to e to the 3 theta. Let's just say it's over here. This is the cosine of 3 theta. This is i times the sine of 3 theta. The real part is the sine of 3 theta, so that's like about here. The imaginary part is the negative of the cosine, so about here. So here's this complex number, and here we have a 270 degree rotation, which is the same as three 90 degree rotations. So we can start with e to the 3 theta i and multiply it by i three times. This is really helpful since we're looking for a geometric series. So let's go ahead and substitute. We're going to have 1 half i e to the theta i for this first term. The next term is 1 fourth, and we'll write this as i squared e to the 2 theta i. And then we have 1 eighth, and then i cubed e to the 3 theta i, and so on. So this looks like our infinite geometric series. And here's our formula for the sum. Our first term is 1 in our common ratio. We multiply each term by a half, and then i, and then e to the theta times i. So substituting in our formula, we have 1 over 1 minus 1 half i to the e theta i. Let's get rid of the fraction in the denominator by multiplying by 2 over 2. This is our q plus i times p. We want to split this into the real and imaginary parts because we're given a value for p over q. So let's make our denominator real. We can do that by multiplying the numerator and denominator by 2 plus i times e to the negative theta times i, and we'll foil out the denominator. Our first term is 4, second term is 2 times i times e to the negative theta i. The inside terms are minus 2 i e to the i theta, and then our last term 
We have i squared, which is negative 1, and we have another negative 1 from the plus and the minus. So this gives us a plus e to the i theta minus theta. This is e to the 0, which is 1, so I'll add it to the 4 to get 5. And from these two other terms, I'm going to factor out 2i. Let's see if we can figure out where this expression is in the complex plane. Let's say this is e to the i theta. This is negative theta, so this is e to the negative theta times i. Multiplying by i results in a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation. So this over here is i times e to the negative theta i, and this angle over here is also theta. The real part of this complex number is the same thing as the sine of theta, so I'll put that here. The imaginary part of this complex number is the same thing as the cosine of theta, so I'll put in i times the cosine of theta in the numerator. Let's simplify the denominator by rewriting this expression. Let's say this is theta, so this is e to the i theta. In the opposite direction, we have the negative of e to the i theta. And then over here, this is negative theta, so this is e to the negative theta i. So in this expression over here, we're adding the negative of e to the i theta and e to the negative i theta. When we add these two complex numbers, the real parts are going to cancel, so the real part is going to be zero. The imaginary part is the sine of negative theta. We count that twice, once for each of these two complex numbers. So this expression becomes 2 times i times the sine of negative theta. We can simplify this some more because the sine of negative theta is equal to the negative sine of theta, so we'll make that substitution. We've got a 4 out here. We also have i times i is negative 1, so that's going to cancel out this negative. So we're left with 4 times the sine of theta. Now let's separate the real and imaginary parts. q is going to have 2 times 2 plus the sine of theta over the denominator, and then i times p, we have a 2 over here, and then cosine theta over here with the same denominator. In the problem statement, we're given a value for p over q. The denominators are going to cancel along with these 2s, so I'm going to write this as the cosine of theta over 2 plus the sine of theta. This is given to be 2 root 2 over 7. Let's start by squaring both sides and we'll FOIL out the denominator. And on the right-hand side, we have 8 over 49. I'm going to multiply by the denominators and also make the substitution for cosine squared in terms of sine squared. I'm going to distribute and combine like terms. This looks like a quadratic in sine of theta. I'll just make this substitution to make it easier to see. 57 is 3 times 19, so let's try factoring. And we'll pair the 17 with the 3x. And we get the middle term that we're looking for, so we'll solve for x, and then substitute back in sine of theta. So far we have two possible solutions for sine of theta. Returning to the problem statement, we are given our bounds on theta, which means that the sine of theta is not going to be positive. So sine of theta is negative 17 over 19. In the problem statement, that's negative m over n. So m plus n is 36. If you'd like me to solve any other math contest problems, please leave them in the comments.